Dwarf Sagittaria is an amazing carpeting plant, but also low tech, meaning it only needs some light, a little bit of fertilizer, maybe some root tabs, something like that. And you kind of just let it set and forget. And it's going to carpet throughout the tank and kind of go around the decorations, depending on, you know, nutrients and water changes and what fish and all of that. It's how fast it will propagate. But this is kind of the one plant wonder where it will kind of fill in. It only gets, well, I guess it depends on your light. If you don't have much light at all, it gets pretty tall. If you get a lot of light, it stays pretty scrunched down. It gives you that unique look of the jungle. So highly recommend it. Uh, you can mix it with other plants, especially if you... Mix it with some red if you got a little bit of higher light, but uh, keeping it easy and simple is the key to low tech. Cryptocorns, or crypts as they're called, are my absolute favorite. They require just some root tabs. They come in a bunch of varieties from little tiny like Crypt Parva all the way to Crypt Wendedi Red or Tropica or Pink Flamingo. There's all these different varieties and they're really easy to grow. Even in aquariums that don't have light, sometimes this light coming in from the side will do it, you know, from a light up in the room. Root tabs, feed them a bunch of root tabs, they're great. What I like about this is if you use a bunch of root tabs with crypts, you don't have to fertilize the water column and therefore you get a lot less algae. So especially if your tank is well established and your gravel is filled with fish poop, they'll thrive. And that's another benefit. They don't have to have fancy substrates or anything like that. Just gravel, some nutrients, and some light, and they will look beautiful. They're slow growers, so you don't have to trim all the time. And uh, you can just enjoy. Amazon swords have been around forever. From when we used light bulbs that were this big around and put out barely any light, they would grow even then. And so they'll grow in your aquarium, provided we give them some fish poop or fertilizer in the gravel in the form of root tabs for most people and any light really it does it's it will die back when you get it till the roots get you know their structure set and all of that then it'll come back but almost any light and you know obviously if there's no light they won't grow but lighting technology has gotten so good over the last like 30 40 years that Aquarium plants have gotten much, much easier. It's kind of like, do you have a light? Then a lot of these plants will grow, not so much needing the high tech with CO2 and, and fancy fertilizers and big expensive lights. Amazon sword is a staple. It will get like three feet uh, and it will make babies and all of that, but it takes a long time to do that. And when the leaves start turning clear, that's when you know you need to put more root tabs in. Anubius, I love them. I love Anubia Santa Petite. I love Coffifolia. I love Nana. These are all just different types of this plant, and it's kind of a thicker leaf, kind of feels like a corn husk. Like if you ever husk corn, right? You put this on stuff. So whether you're putting it on a coconut hut, a piece of wood, a piece of rock, maybe you got a fake decoration that you're like, yeah, that was when I was new, and now I'm kind of into plants. You can cover it in this Anubius. It'll grow over it, kind of like a ivy growing over a castle wall, that kind of stuff. It'll look really cool long term. Short term takes a little bit. What's nice is these do feed out of the water column. And so you just have to feed fish and kind of, you know, use what's naturally in your water. And you can give it a little squirt of easy green or some other fertilizer. But these are super duper low light tolerant. And because the leaves are thicker, they tolerate a little bit of a beating from a fish too. So they are a slow grower, which means they use nutrients in low light, which is really nice. But it takes a long time to see that giant Anubius plant that maybe you've seen in a store or something like that. And it's a, a thing of beauty. You'll be real proud, you know, a year or two down the road when your tank's filled with this thing. Uh, and they're, they command a lot of money. They're usually more expensive to buy when small. And then when you want to tear your tank down or start a new one, like they're worth quite a bit of money. So uh, get some Anubius growing over time. They only look better. Java Moss is a fun one. It We sell it on little mats, but you can get it as a clump or a bunch of different things. And it grows under real low light. Almost any nutrients in the water, fish poop, snail poop, shrimp poop, any of that. Uh, you can obviously fertilize it. The trick to the Java Moss, I find, is... A lot of times when you buy it, it's been grown out of water, so you're gonna watch it kind of die back a little bit. And when it does come back, it's going to you know, be a little brown, then it turns green. When you see good growth on it, all the tips are nice bright green. And that's when your plant's really starting to turn the corner. Now with it on a mat, you can just set it on the gravel or you could wrap it around a tree branch or a rock. If you're just getting a clump, you can stick it into something and let it kind of grow out of it. So get yourself some Java Moss. Dwarf aquarium lilies are fun because you buy them as a bulb. Come in, in dirt usually and you gotta rinse them off and you put them in your tank. 
and then they explode with growth and a lot of times this is the fastest growing plant people that are new to the hobby have ever played with because that bulb is full of the fertilizer so that fertilizer will get that plant growing and it gets these big lily pads on the surface and it puts some down below and it's got the red color that it's kind of hard to grow low tech does wonders and once those roots from that bulb reach down to that gravel and tap into the nutrients it'll replenish that storage of fertilizer there so that's all you're looking for to do sometimes you'll plant it doesn't do anything flip it over it does have a top and a bottom and you kind of have to work with it a little bit to find where that's going to be but once it's going it goes like gangbusters long term if you don't have a heavy bio load from fish which is just a lot of fish poop put a lot of root tabs underneath it because as it gets big it wants to eat more and more and more and it looks better and better and better and if you get uh, little holes in your leaves and stuff like that it's starting to run out of food so that's just a little tip for you Java ferns work just like Anubias, so they like to grow onto stuff. Now they get longer leaves and they grow on a rhizome, so they kind of grow laterally. So most plants they grow, you know, up and down. These ones grow side to side for the most part. And so they kind of are fun to put on a piece of wood and kind of make a tree out of it or guide where it's going to grow. It just likes a lot of water fertilizer, a lot of potassium in the water. So, you know, Easy Green will do that. Other fertilizers will do that to some degree as well. Uh, fish foods will help. It's really a low demanding plant. If it if it doesn't get enough, it starts turning yellow and brown a little bit. And those leaves don't recover. So if it goes bad, like, okay, give it more food, whether you're feeding the fish more or buying more fish or putting in fertilizer, then the new leaves will be much more green. Sometimes you can see little seeds on them. Those are the starts to new leaves. If you want to propagate more, you can actually pull a whole leaf off, let it float around the aquarium. And a lot of times you'll see a lot of little baby uh, plantlets, as we'll call it, on there. And you can take those and you can super glue them or tie them to stuff. And so one plant can actually make quite a few plants. And it's one of those ones that a lot of people will have in their lifetime. And they'll always kind of have it in one of their aquariums because it's so nice to just go make new decorations. A piece of wood, a rock, and a plant. And it looks great after a couple of months. Bacopa caroliniana is a stem plant that grows tall. Now a lot of times those are seen as a little more finicky. They need a little more light. But this one's pretty darn easy to grow. And so it just grows vertically. And so people might go, how big does it get? as tall as your aquarium is and then some we've had to grow up out of the water before that looks super cool it just wants w nutrients basically all the time in the water and at the roots if you give it both of those it really will thrive if you give it just one it can struggle a little bit it usually will grow so it's, it's an easy grower you know not too difficult but uh, it does do better if you're getting it at both zones there. You know, different shaped leaves if you mix in with some of the other plants we've talked about today. And overall, low maintenance. So uh, I like that you can use lower light levels and things like that. And so you're not trimming it every week. When you do trim it, though, you just give it a little haircut, put that stem down on the ground. It'll grow roots, and now you made a new plant. Super easy to propagate that one. Unlike some of the others, that like a, a dwarf aquarium bulb or something like that, that's pretty hard to propagate. But these ones, you buy one batch, you get it growing really pretty easy. You can even float them. If you float them in the tank, the roots will kind of just grow down. It looks kind of cool, and then they'll come up out of the water. So give it a try. Make sure you check this video out up here because you want to make sure your plants don't melt. So if you're about to order plants or you just got plants and maybe they are getting a little yellow melting back, this video will fix you right up.